Okay folks, welcome back and we're going to begin building this AM FM radio kit from Alenco that uh, Hank sent me. Um, we're going to be, start right at the beginning and work our way through. So the first thing we'll be doing here, now this will be a, a multi-part series, this is a quite an extensive kit and uh, I'm not going to be able to build it all in one video. But we'll get started on section 1A here, integrated circuit audio amplifier. So see here, it, it's got a, this whole section this, of the manual here, explains exactly what uh, this amplifier does and how it works. It goes through some typical applications of the chip that they use, which is the uh, venerable old LM386. And uh, gives this specific schematic for this circuit as well. And uh, it goes through the assembly instructions point by point, and it gets a little check marks here, so you can make sure that you check one each one off, and uh, indeed uh, get to where you want without making uh, too many mistakes. And uh, if you do, you can always go back and see which thing was checked off, and check that against the what's installed in the circuit board. Let's get our parts out here. It looks like we started off with uh, R43, which is a uh, 100 ohm resistor. And when I do my uh, resistors, I like to keep them all in the same way. So I'm going to put the gold band facing that way. So I'm looking at the board like this. I'm going to be able to read the stripes on there, uh, the color code, without having to flip the board around or guess which way it's supposed to go. Um, that way I can quickly make a check to see if something's in the wrong place or not. Okay, we've got the leads bent over and we're going to begin soldering. Well, this is really weird. So they have the IC just thrown into the bag and they have the socket in the anti-static. Okay, it's a new one on me, but... Uh... Now they want to put in a jumper wire here, but unless that has something to do with the transistor amplifier, I'm not sure why we're doing it because it's not skipping over any traces so it may be that uh, you have to cut this jumper to put in the other amplifier and it would make sense So we finished uh, assembling everything here for the, the IC amplifier. And uh, now we're going to, and I cleaned up a little bit too. It's another thing we're going to do. Um, the manual is, is great and, and I'm going to use it, but in a different form um, just for doing the videos here because it is difficult with uh, you know keeping that thing folded flat. So I'm, I'm just going to go ahead now and, and uh, print out the sheets I'm going to be working with. And that way it might be a little bit easier for me to handle while I'm doing the video. Um, let me get these parts out of the way for a second here. Okay, so um, Yeah, first thing we're going to do is we're going to see what the current is like now I'm going to have to um, Move the phone around quite a bit. I use a phone for my videoing here 
for you guys to see what I'm uh, looking at on the meter. Um, I'm just, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to be hooking up this battery here. Uh, these black and red wires go up to the meter. And this yellow wire just kind of skips over here to the battery holder. So let me change this, the view here for you. And um, we'll probably go to turn on and just see what the current is. Okay, okay I'm just going to do this handheld. So here, I'm, I'm going to switch it on right now. So it looks like it it, it, it peaks at uh, maybe look like 10 milliamps there and then settles down to under four. Um, that 10 milliamp peak was probably the capacitors charging up. And so this is this is well below the 10 milliamps minimum or maximum that it, it's supposed to have. So we're good there. Now the next thing to do would be to check the voltage at the output bias. Let me set up for that. Okay, so here we've got the uh, Leads going to the meter. Um, the ground is attached to test point 15, and uh, the positive lead is attached to test point 2. And we're going to set up for DC volts on the meter. And I'm going to turn it on. And we're supposed to see somewhere between uh, 3 and 6 volts, and we're just, just about perfectly in between. That's good. Okay, so the next test we're going to do, um, this one's going to be the dynamic measurements here. So we want to measure gain, and uh, we're going to set up a, a meter and a signal generator as shown. I'm also going to employ an oscilloscope as well because uh, uh, some of the things they say in here like the, they're going on here, they said increase the volume control to about halfway. Now, halfway, to me, that means minus D, 3 dB from maximum. So that's what I'm going to use the oscilloscope to help me do. And uh, then we can go ahead and do the, the gain measurement as per their instructions here. Let me set up. Okay, so we have the signal generator going in here to test point two, and we have the um, oscilloscope coming off test point one there and we're going to eject a signal from the signal generator we've got a sine wave going in there at 7.1 millivolts rms and that's coming out to our scope here and it's giving us exactly one volt at maximum volume on the amplifier so i'm going to bring this down to 0.7 oops sorry about my finger there and bring this down to 0.7. Uh, okay, so now we're 3 dB down, so we're about, we're about halfway on the volume. And now I'm going to increase the output of the signal generator until we go back up to 1 volt as per their instructions. Now you could do this on a voltmeter too, but I just like to see the, I just like to see the signal. Oh, a little bit over there. There, that's close enough. Okay, so we've got, uh, 10.2 millivolts going in, and we got uh, one volt coming out. So let's fill in our little sheet here with a pencil. So we got um, 10.2, and we got one volt coming out, so that'll give us a gain. Okay, calculations done, that'll give us a gain of about 98. Um, so we're, we're just a, a hair's breadth away from what they're saying here should be 100 to 180. And at, at half volume, I'm not, I'm not buying that because the LM386 has got a, an open loop gain of 200, um, maximum. So a half volume, yeah, you, you're not going to get that. So I'm, I'm happy with that. 98 is, is, is perfectly fine for this. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we have to do here. Now we're getting into the AC bandwidth. It's basically the, the, the same setup. 
So they wanted me to, to just increase the, the input level until we're reading about two volts on the output. So let's do that. Let's, uh, There we go. Let's see if we can get that more accurate because they want us to do uh, that's about as accurate as we're going to get. Okay, so now they want us to increase the frequency until um, until we get a, a 3 dB drop. So we've got in here a input of 20. 0.2 millivolts and we're now going to increase the frequency until the output goes down to 1.4 so let's go to frequency where we should be and let's go up in hundreds kilohertz I'm calling it here that's way beyond the audio range okay so the high 3d point is 90 kilohertz and now they want us to go back down the other way And we're down now to 100 hertz, and we're, I'm going to call it there. Okay, that's pretty good. Low is 0.1 kilohertz. And calculate the DC bandwidth. High minus low. So we're, we're basically got a bandwidth of 90 kilohertz here. Yeah, that's uh, greater than the 30 kilohertz they're calling for. Now let's uh, let me read about this distortion thing here, and uh, we'll set that up and be back. Okay, we're at uh, one kilohertz. I've switched to volts peak to peak here, so we've got twenty millivolts peak to peak going in. We've got the volume set on full. We have uh, three point one volts peak to peak coming out. And now I'm just going to increase the amplitude here until we start getting the clipping, and we'll see what voltage that we begin to clip that. They want a good solid clip as well, so. But I think that maybe that looks more like their picture. So it's clipping at 6.23 volts. We'll put that down here. 6.23. Turn the power off. Ooh, thank you. Now, maximum output power. Okay, here we go. Uh, sorry for the extra noise, but that's that power supply there. So we've got a power supply set for, for 9 volts, and we've got uh, a current limit of 200 milliamps. That should be sufficient. We got the positive coming from the power supply going in through the ammeter and coming out of the ammeter and coming down into the board and then from the board back up into the power supply so let's set this up here for dc current and now they want us to turn it on so i've got i've got this turned on all the way and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to turn on the power supply and we'll see what the current draws So again, we're at uh, six. We're at six point four now on the clipping, and we're drawing about a uh, hundred and forty-seven milliamps at one kilohertz at nine volts. All right, let me record all that stuff. So if we take half of the clip, which is a uh, three point two two volts, multiply that by 0.7, we end up at two point two five. Then we square that. And divide by eight, which is eight is the impedance of the uh, speaker. We end up at six hundred and thirty-three milliwatts, and um, they want us to have two hundred milliwatts or better. So, yeah, we're much better.
that's great. All right, let's move on. Battery power was uh, 1.323 watts. So max output over battery power is 0.48 or 48%. That's close enough to the 50% to make me happy. All right, so next we'll be moving on to the next section in the manual. Actually, the next section it was 1B. It's the, it's the transistor audio amplifier. I'm going to skip that entirely. I'm happy with the IC amplifier. I might do it at some later date, but I think it's uh, it's not going to give us the gist of what we do anyway. The so section two, this is what we're moving on to next. And you can see why I wanted to get the sheets. It's, it's just so difficult dealing with this thing like this. Hold on a sec. So the next section we're going to be doing is the AM detector in AGC stage. So that's the automatic gain control. Anyway, thanks for joining me for this episode. We're going to do all that in the next episode and uh, we'll run through it very similar here. In, in the next one though, I'm not even gonna bother showing me soldering unless something really interesting happens and then I'll just show those parts. We'll see, uh, depends on how I feel next day. All right, catch you in the next one.